something is indeed wrong in America. And many sense that changes in this nation's lifestyle are occurring. The newspapers are saturated with articles, reporting the activities of those advocating increased governmental spending, for a variety of unconstitutional purposes, organizations supporting a globalism concept urge the world, to adopt a one-world government, psychologists preaching the destruction of the family unit, and recommending that the society rear the nation's children, governments closing private schools, and nations forming regional governments, under which national borders are scheduled to disappear. Since these changes appear to be part of the new philosophy, known as the New World Order, anyone desiring to know the future has to become familiar with this new phrase and what importance for the world of tomorrow. As an indication that major changes are coming in tomorrow's world, one of the current trends mentioned is the call for a one-world government. One of those supporting this leap forward is Norman Cousins, president of the World Federalist Society. He is on record as saying, world government is coming. In fact, it is inevitable. No arguments for it or against it can change that fact. The goal of a one-world government is not a new thought. One of the earliest formal organizations that supported the concept of that goal was, the Illuminati, founded on May 1, 1776, by Adam Weishaupt, a teacher of canon law at the University of Ingolstadt in Bavaria, now part of Germany. Professor Weishaupt was quoted as saying, It is necessary to establish a universal regime and empire over the whole world. A more modern organization that supports the coming changes is, the Masonic Order, called, simply, the Freemasons or the Masons. This worldwide fraternity has members in America, as will be discussed, and they, too, support a call for a one-world government. One who has written about this secret organization is Paul Fisher, and he says this about them in his book entitled, Behind the Lodge Door. Masonry will eventually rule the world. Albert Pike, the Sovereign Grand Commander of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry here in the United States from 1850 to 1891, wrote a book entitled, Morals and Dogma. Mr. Pike has been praised by his fellow Masons as a member almost without parallel in the history of the Masonic Order. Carl Claudy, himself a Masonic writer of great esteem, wrote this about him. Albert Pike. One of the greatest geniuses Freemasonry has ever known. He was a mystic, a symbolist, a teacher of the hidden truths of Freemasonry. So, the outsider can know that whenever Mr. Pike speaks, he speaks with authority and knowledge. He is perhaps the greatest Masonic writer of all time. His book is given to each Scottish Rite Southern Jurisdiction Freemason who is asked to read it. There seems to be a difference of opinion as to whether or not this book is still required reading for each Scottish Rite Mason. This writer was told that it was given to each Scottish Rite Mason in Tucson. Other Masons say that that is not true. In it, he informs the new Mason about the moral teachings of the Masonic Lodge. He instructs the Masonic reader that the order will eventually be asked to rule the entire earth. He wrote. The world will soon come to us for its sovereigns, apparently referring to its governmental leaders, and pontiffs, apparently meaning its religious leaders. We shall constitute the equilibrium of the universe and be rulers over the masters of the world. He wrote this supportive statement in a book entitled, Legenda. And thus the warfare against the powers of evil that crushed the order of the temple goes steadily on, and freedom marches ever onward toward the conquest of the world. The Order of the Temple Mr. Pike was writing about was the Knights Templar, which was, according to him, devoted to the cause of opposition to the tiara, the Pope's triple crown, and the crowns of kings. Mr. Pike said that the Catholic Church was a power of evil. Because it had crushed the Templars, even though he admitted that they were devoted to opposition to the Church and its leader, the Pope. But the major point of that quote is that these forces of opposition, presumably meaning the Masons, are marching onward toward the conquest of the world. Mr. Pike repeated his devotion to the conquest of the world, with this comment at the end of his book entitled, Morals and Dogma. Such, my brother, is the true word of a master mason, such the true royal secret, which makes possible, and shall at length make real, the holy empire of true Masonic brotherhood. But, the major worldwide movement that champions a one-world government, under religious leader, is a new phenomena occurring worldwide called, the New Age Movement. Tex Mars, a researcher into this new religion, has written two books on the subject. Both of these books are excellent primers for those who wish to know more about the beliefs of this religion. The two books are entitled, Dark Secrets of the New Age, and, Mystery Mark of the New Age. He has written. The New Age movement has undeniably taken on the definite form of a religion, complete with an agreed-upon body of doctrine, printed scripture, a pattern of worship and ritual, a functioning group of ministers and lay leaders. Another writer who has written two books on the New Age religion is Constance Cumby. Her two books are called The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow and A Planned Deception. She has written this. 
the New Age movement is a religion complete with its own Bibles, prayers and mantras, Vatican City or Jerusalem equivalents, priests and gurus, born-again experiences, they call it rebirthing, spiritual laws and commandments, psychics and prophets, and nearly every other indicia of a religion. The new religion has a series of leaders. One is a woman named Alice Bailey, a prolific writer on the subject of the New Age. She was the founder of an organization called the Arcane School, one of the major Lucis Trust divisions. The Lucis Trust was a major publisher of books supporting the religion. In her book entitled, The Externalization of the Hierarchy, she told her readers who the organizations were that were going to bring the New Age religion to the world. She identified them as being. The three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on, might be regarded as the church, the Masonic fraternity and the educational field. The main thrust of this book will to be to examine only one of the three organizations mentioned by this author, that being the Masonic fraternity. There are numerous works by other writers exposing the involvement of the church and the educational field in the New Age movement, so this writer will not attempt to duplicate those efforts. However, only a few are aware of the involvement of the Masons, and that is why I have chosen to concentrate on that organization. Another major writer on the New Age movement is Benjamin Krem, and he admitted in his book entitled, The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom that the new religion will manifest, for instance, through organizations like Masonry. In Freemasonry is embedded the core of the secret of the occult mysteries. So Masonry conceals a great mystery inside its temples, one that is connected somehow to the New Age movement. The Masons admit in some of their writings that they too are anticipating a new age, a series of major changes. Henry Clausen, the past sovereign grand commander, the equivalent of their president of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, has been quoted as saying. We look towards a transforming into a new age, using, however, the insight and wisdom of the ancient mystics. The Masons claim that the things that they believe in are as old as the ancient civilizations. They also claim that these mystics, the ancient philosophers, had the wisdom of all ages, and that somehow this knowledge has become lost through the centuries. Humanity today does not possess this knowledge, but it has become the task of the Masons and other truth seekers to rediscover these principles for the benefit of all of mankind. Those possessing this knowledge will correct the world's current problems. Some of the Masons also claim to have identified the cause of these problems. One of the most prolific writers on the subject of this lost truth is Manly P. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason. For those unfamiliar with the Masonic degrees, all Masons in America start through what is called the Blue Lodge, consisting of three degrees. The initiate into this lodge goes through three separate and different initiation ceremonies, one for each degree. After completing these ceremonies, he may stay where he is, or choose to affiliate himself with either the York Rite or the Scottish Rite. The latter is divided into two separate jurisdictions, the Southern and the Northern. These are based primarily on state borders, and whether one joins one or the other depends on where the initiate lives. The two Scottish Rites have an additional 29 degrees, making for a total of 32. There is one more degree, called the 33rd degree, which is honorary, and only a few are invited into that degree. The York Rite has a total of 9 degrees. However, since little has been revealed about this order, the author will concentrate on only the Scottish Rite, and in particular, the Southern Jurisdiction. Mr. Hall has written a book entitled, Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, in which he talks a great deal about the Masonic Fraternity. This is his comment about the coming changes. A new day is dawning for Freemasonry. From the insufficiency of theology and the helplessness of materialism, men are turning to seek the god of philosophy. Notice that Mr. Hall has said that current theology, obviously current religion, has proven insufficient. Also, he feels that materialism, meaning the right to private property, is also a failure. But more importantly, he points out that this new god of the Freemasons is somehow different from the god of the Jews and Christians. As will be illustrated later, some of the Masons believe that the god of the Bible is a god of evil. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, perhaps the founder of the current New Age movement, has also determined that the Masons are somehow supportive of her religious views. She wrote this in her book entitled, The Secret Doctrine. At the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th centuries, many Freemasons traveled to Tibet, where they were initiated into the esoteric, defined as intended for or understood by only a chosen few, as an inner group of disciples or initiates, Order of the Masters of Wisdom. It should be expected that she would support the Masonic fraternity. In 1875, she founded an organization called the Theosophical Society, basically dedicated to teaching the world about her new secret religion. One of the earliest members of that organization was Albert Pike, later to become the sovereign grand commander of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Albert Pike, who later became a 33rd degree Mason, the highest degree attainable, also saw that there were some significant changes coming, and that he was supportive of those changes. He wrote the following in his book entitled, Morals and Dogma. We can look on all the evils of the world, and see that it is only the hour before sunrise, and that the light is coming. 
If Mr. Hall is right, the evils that his fellow Mason Albert Pike saw are connected to current religion, and that which is coming is somehow different from those religious views. Mr. Hall, who was mentioned previously as another 33rd degree Mason, also wrote that a new day was coming, and that it was not too far into the future. A new light is breaking in the east, the significance of the location, the east, will be pointed out later, a more glorious day is at hand. The rule of the philosophical act, the dream of the ages, would yet be realized and is not too far distant. So, Mr. Hall is also expecting that these changes are about to occur in the not too distant future. Someone who attempted to zero in on when these changes were expected to occur was Alice Bailey, previously mentioned. She wrote about when she thought the new age would arrive. Eventually, there will appear the church universal, and its definite outlines will appear towards the close of the century. Since she wrote early in the 20th century, we can see that she was predicting the eventual arrival of the new age, sometime around the 1990s. This estimate of that date is not too far wrong, as will be demonstrated later in this channel. Whatever is coming in the future, some New Agers have told us that they expect that it will last for a long time. One such writer is Ruth Montgomery, who wrote that she saw that the new religion would rule the earth for a thousand years. She wrote the following in her book entitled, Herald for the New Age. The New Age, the Millennium, a millennium is a period of 1,000 years, will see an end to that strife, at least for a thousand years. Just what is the New Age religion that will last for at least 1,000 years on the earth? One who attempted to answer that question was Constance Cumbie in her book entitled, The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. She wrote that these were the basic tenets of the new religion. 1. The plan for the future includes the installation of a new world messiah, the implementation of a new world government, and new world religion under Maitreya, an individual who will be examined later in this channel. 2. A universal credit card system will be implemented. 3. A world food authority will control all of the world's food supply. 4. A universal tax. 5. A universal draft. 6. They intend on utterly rooting out people who believe the Bible and worship God, and to completely stamp out Christianity. As was discussed prior to this summary, certain people have indicated that they see the Catholic Church as an enemy. Here Mrs. Cumbie says that they see not only Catholicism as the enemy, they also see all of Christianity as an enemy. Whatever the New Agers believe in, it appears to be growing in popularity. Bantam Books, one of this nation's leading publishing houses, has reported that the sales of their New Age titles has increased tenfold in the past decade. Time Magazine reports that the number of New Age bookstores has doubled in the past five years, to a total of about 2,500. According to an article in Forbes magazine, publishers estimate that total sales of New Age titles today are at least $100 million at retail. So, whatever they believe in, many believe in it. But perhaps the most insightful comment about the nature of what the New Age religion believed in, and who they worshipped as their god, was written by Mrs. Cumbie in her book entitled, The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. She wrote that they had the intent of bringing about a new world order, an order that writes God out of the picture and deifies Lucifer. So, if Mrs. Cumbie and the other writers on the subject are right, the New Age movement needs to be studied in some depth. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe and healthy.